right, welcome back. Uh, at K24 TV is how you can reach us. Remember, those social uh, media platforms are still the same. The hashtag is K24 this morning and our WhatsApp number at the bottom of your screen. My name is Shiko Kaitani. I'm uh, with you for the next uh, 30 minutes or so, even as we get talking. would really love you to contribute to our ongoing discussions right here on K24. And as we had said earlier on, as from 9 a.m., you will be getting the analysis and the very latest in terms of the World Cup, what's happening over in Qatar. But for now, the African continent is a unique and diverse continent with rich history, cultures, and tradition. Now, the story of the continent has, however, been checkered depending on who is telling the story and for which audience. Now, Africa, especially in the eyes of the Western media, has focused on things going wrong. And this is particularly detrimental because of the relative lack of other widely accessible resources or sources of knowledge, rather, about the continent, especially by the African media. And so today we're meeting a man who is on a mission known as Phil Scott, who carries the burden to tell the African story to the globe. Well, he is the founder of the African Diaspora News Channel. It is a YouTube-based news network with over, get this, 1.35 million subscribers. Phil, how did you do this? 1.3 million. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Karibu sana. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for yes. welcoming me here. This is impressive. Over a million subscribers. I think that just really speaks to the demand, mm -hmm. you know, that your audience really does have to want to know the facts, Correct. the truth, what the real situation is on the ground, especially concerning this continent. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Well, you know, for me, it's that we do care, you know, even in America, you know, mm -hmm. we do care what's happening here in the African continent. Mm -hmm. I always say if you lose the African continent, we in the diaspora really don't have nowhere else to go. Right. Because we look at all the countries that we stay in, we're really behind enemy lines. Mm -hmm. We don't run those countries, none of them, whether you're in America, Canada, or you in the Latin American countries, nobody black yeah. running anything. I think the highest black person you have in the in Colombia right now um, is a the vice president. Oh. Um, yeah, they, mm -hmm. they have a new black vice president, which is like awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, she was an activist, so it's great to see her. Mm -hmm. Shout out to her. Mm -hmm. But we have been suppressed. Our voice has been suppressed, and most of the media houses have been owned. Um, by you know white people and mm -hmm. telling the story that white people want to do and yeah. unfortunately their story is going to be anti-black you know racism white supremacy unfortunately mm -hmm. so it's on us to take control of our own narratives yeah. because you know information you know is warfare and mm -hmm. we have been participating mm -hmm. we've been kind of begging yeah you know please you know mr white man at cnn could you give us a position <laughs> could you tell our story but they tell it underneath their lens right. which makes us look bad yeah mm -hmm. and, and at what point because i also want to understand when did you decide enough is enough even for you to actually set up this particular channel um when did you say that's it uh, something needs to be done well, like what 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 really sparked it for you well originally you know some things like trayvon martin you know mm. when he was originally killed yeah. you know by you know that devil jar zimmerman mm. and what happened in the pain that you know started and you eventually got you know, people in the street and they start talking about Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and then just the constant, you know, black people have been killed, you know, like your Michael Brown. Yeah. And your, um, people like, of course, you know, the George Floyd, you had a big uprising of George Floyd or yeah. Tatiana Jefferson or just many, you know, black people that's no different than me and you mm -hmm. have their life taken away from them. But you see your white counterparts, they can literally fight the police and nothing happens to them. Mm -hmm. But if a black person just answers back, mm -hmm. then you you trying to kill us yeah so when i started to look with time i started realizing wait a minute it's not just america but it's black people throughout the world that's dealing with white supremacy now we deal with direct white supremacy we in the belly of the beast mm -hmm. in the african continent you deal with indirect white supremacy mm -hmm. so you may think well your leaders are this and that and the third no nah, but if you look behind the hidden hand yeah white supremacy is actually controlling a lot of your Everything. leaders right yes yeah. and, and you some people don't realize that mm-hmm mm-hmm 
And so, I mean, even for you to be on a mission to, you know, doing your tour, can I call it a tour <laughs> that you're on right now? You know, you've come to Nairobi. I'm sure you have a, a number of destinations or places that you will be visiting. I mean, how does this really now tie us in or rope us into the mission? Like, what would you want us, even as Kenyans who are watching you right now, mm -hmm. to tie in even to what your mission is, even with your channel and the kind of content that you're churning out? What do you want us to know? Well, what I want you to know is that you are important uh -huh. and your issues are important. Uh -huh. um, your stories are important. And right now we know you have one story that's out. They're talking about the GMO foods. Yeah. And everybody is real hot about that topic in mm -hmm. Kenya. Everybody should be talking about that because I stated yesterday that GMO foods will kill you. Right. You don't want that in your country. Right. You, you so everybody's like, oh, we don't want cancer rates like the yes, ones that you, they're you, seeing you in the West. You don't want yeah. the cancer rates. Yeah. You don't want the diabetes rates. Mm -hmm. They come in with all the excessive salt they put in the food, the chemicals, the preservatives they put in American food. That's mm -hmm. why I'm shocked when I hear, you know, people from Kenya or other African countries, can you bring me back some chocolate from America? Why? <laughs> do you know what they do to it? It is crazy because they take the chocolate that's sourced here in the African continent. Mm -hmm. They take it to the Western world mm -hmm. raw. They add all the crap they yeah. put in it, mm -hmm. and then they want to sell it back to you? Mm -hmm. You got the chocolate pure. Get it from here. <laughs> yeah. Why do you want that? Yes. So, yeah. so if yeah. you want to deal with those issues and problems that we have in the West with health, mm -hmm. and black people, unfortunately, is dealing with health issues more than any other group. Yeah. You know, why? Because of the food. So mm -hmm. do not allow genetic modified organisms, food, come into your country mm. unless you want to die. Yeah. How will we change the narrative, uh, if you think about it, Phil? Because one of the biggest issues that we're dealing on this continent, it's not just a Kenyan problem, mm -hmm. it's an African issue, mm -hmm. the corruption that's leading to all these things mm -hmm. happen happening, rabbi, right? Mm -hmm. And it almost feels like we're helpless. You will say, put the good leaders, vote for good leaders. Mm -hmm. But how are we ever going to change the narrative? How are we ever going to make Africa know its true value at this rate? Well, first of all, you must love your individual countries. Yeah. And you must also need to unify underneath, you know, a pan-Africanism, you know, banner. It has not happened because, they're, oh, I'm this tribe, I'm that tribe. But the good thing about me and my ancestors that we were taken away over 500 years ago. We mm -hmm. were stripped of everything and we had to build up our own ethnicity in America. So we couldn't divide on, well, I'm not your people, you're not my people. It's yeah. like we dealing with racism and white supremacy, mm -hmm. you know, for 250 mm -hmm. years of slavery mm -hmm. and then you do 100 years of Jim Crow. Yeah. So what you have to do is come together for one mm -hmm. and understand that Kenya is your country. You don't need to leave. I had got a figure yesterday that 20 million young people want to leave. Why? That is the, the most detrimental thing I've heard or the brain drain coming out of Kenya. Because they want the African dream I mean, or the American dream. <laughs> what dream is that? You, what is the American dream? Uh, who knows? We just know that it's the land of opportunities. It, 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 it lies. Right. All that you can do good in America is make money. Mm -hmm. But what's the trade-off? Mm -hmm. You're going to lose your culture. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose, you know, the, the morality that you have in America. Anything goes. Mm -hmm. To come from this environment, to go to America, it, you can't, a lot of people can't handle that. They're going to lose themselves. Right. And, and, and it's just, it, it's not conducive for children. Mm -hmm. You got to worry about... Uh, people trying to snatch your wife, snatch your children in these white vans. We're talking about all the human trafficking. Like, they want to talk about human trafficking in other countries. Mm -hmm. Human trafficking is horrible in America. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Mm -hmm. But they don't talk about that. They don't tell you, okay, you come to America, make some money, but do you want to worry about getting shot in the back 19 times by the police? All right. Do you want that? You're not dealing with that here in Kenya. Yeah, no. It may not be perfect, mm -hmm. but you can fix your country. But yeah. you have to stay and fight for your country. Yeah. I think also because um, one of the things that you're, you know, trying to put across even through your platform mm -hmm. is about seeing the beauty yes. um, in ourselves, in our continent, in mm -hmm. our culture. Mm -hmm. Why don't you comment a little bit about that so that we can stop portraying issues to do with famine, drought, corruption, death, violence. I don't know. Like, it's just all bad news. But right, there are some right. beautiful things happening. Well, you have to understand yeah. corruption is in every country. Mm -hmm. Corruption is in the Western world. Mm -hmm. Violence. Mm -hmm. I live in America. I live in Texas. Everybody just about You're got a Texas. gun. 
Everybody got <laughs> a gun. My sisters live in Texas. Okay, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Everybody can have a gun. Yeah. You, you can walk around open carry with a gun. Yeah, I was actually quite freaked out yes. when, I, when I visited Texas. Yes. It was crazy. That, that, can, that can happen, you know. And unfortunately, you, a lot of times people need guns because America is so violent. Right. I mean, you look at the crime rates, right? You can look at, the, like, say, the human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Anything. You're talking about government corruption. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of corruption in the American government, too. The only difference is America and the Western world are great at masking their corruption underneath laws and loopholes, mm -hmm. but here it's kind of like, oh, well, that person's corrupt. We know that person's corrupt. Mm -hmm. I like to know you're corrupt versus making me think that, oh, they're not corrupt, but all governments throughout the world is, is, is corrupt. So don't think that you got a problem here that's not in the Western world. And why mm -hmm. people think the Western world is better? Mm -hmm. The Western world is where it's at because it is a leech and a parasite on the African continent, leaching all the resources so they can live good. The moment you guys cut them off right. from your resources, they're yeah. going to be quote unquote third world. Mm -hmm. Which the term third world is so disrespectful because mm -hmm. there's third world conditions in America too. Third right. world conditions that we Canada. just don't know about. Yeah, look, look at Ukraine. They third world. Mm -hmm. They've been third world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that we don't believe in ourselves or have that kind of confidence in ourselves. Mm -hmm. So even for us, um, on a small scale, uh, what, what would you encourage me to do? Like, how do I begin to start changing our story, you know, and start looking at the positives? What can I really do? Someone who's watching you and say, okay, Phil has a point. Maybe I really do need to start appreciating what's mine, what's our home. Mm -hmm. You know, where do I start? What do I do? Well, first of all, Look at the, the upper mobility of the country. Mm -hmm. Like when I came in 2019, you didn't, you didn't have that beautiful expressway. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw. I said, oh, wow, now I can get from the airport to the hotel now in like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was, took an hour before. <laughs> I mean, so you look at upper mobility, you know, like that that you yeah. have. You got to look at, okay, our country can really grow. We can be better. We need to love our country, have pride in our country. Yeah. That's, that's first and foremost. Number yeah. two, combat the narratives that's put out by white supremacy mm. and white supremacy they use media as warfare mm -hmm. and you have to use media to counter that you must own your own narrative mm -hmm. no one should be speaking about kenyans or the african continent more than the people here yeah yeah sure i'm i'm definitely going to speak because yeah. i'm definitely have african descent mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. but who's going to speak for kenyan issues more than the kenyan all right i find it interesting that um you know, a lot of the international media just have bureaus in specific regions, but exactly. someone from Burundi will be telling a story to Westerners about what's happening in Nairobi. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy. It's like right. the, the person is totally, you know, misplaced mm -hmm. to be the one reporting. But anyway, such is the story. A and so if I want to actually contribute to the content on Africa Diaspora News Channel, how can I do that, Phil? How can you do it specifically? Yeah. Well, how I would look at it is say, okay, we do have like a contributor program mm. that say, hey, I would like to contribute to what you guys are doing. I want to tell the news out of Kenya. Yeah. We're welcome to that. Okay. We're definitely welcome. We have a way for people to do that. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, we're going to look at, of course, you, you know what you're doing, so I don't really have to kind of go through certain things with you versus others. Yeah. But you just tell those stories. But the way we do things is that we are very, some people may deem us as kind of uh, aggressive the way we do it, but we have to because... <laughs> What's happening to us is very aggressive. Mm. What's happening to us is very dire. Mm. And if we don't stand up and fight back, mm -hmm. you know, with countering the narrative, it's dangerous the narratives they're putting out about black people, African people, Caribbean people globally. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous. And how people think about you is how they treat you. Mm -hmm. This is why you can see Africans uh, being not allowed on trains in Ukraine, but they let dogs go on trains. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's yeah. because of the narratives they put that African people is nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, they, they're just always poor. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of billionaires right here in the African continent. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. The poor you have with you always in every country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have to control those narratives. Yeah. And not allow, which I see on YouTube sometimes, you know, Mazungus, like y'all call them, <laughs> come into your country yeah. and do poverty, you know, what you would call online poverty porn. Or, like they like to go to places like Kibera and yeah. film like, oh, look, those poor black people. And then they yes. get a lot of money yeah. off of that content mm. or they create a nonprofit and say, look, I'm going to give money to these people over here. Right. And they, they are finessing money and they get all the money and nobody in Kibera. Nothing is changing in Kibera. Yeah. No, nothing. Yeah. It's because, but y'all yeah. have to start gatekeeping your country mm. when you have these people coming in here and you see them with cameras. start looking at them because when you go into their country, they suspicious of you. Yeah. What are you doing here? What yeah. you got going on? Or like in, in America, 
I see this black person in my neighborhood. I don't know what they're doing. They're walking down the street <laughs> calling the police on you because they're suspicious. Yeah, you're but, just taking a jog. In Kenya, or yeah. other African countries, <laughs> yeah. you don't you don't be suspicious. Of them. Oh, look at them. Yeah. I'm very suspicious. When yeah. I saw them keep Barry yesterday, I'm like, what are they doing? And to be honest, really, if all the NGOs were actually quite effective, then there would be none of these issues, right? Like, how long have they been on ground? Why are these problems never ending? They're bringing problems to your country. Yeah, right. So some of them come to your country, and some of them are deviants. Uh -huh. Some of them are pedophiles Yeah. in your country. Mm -hmm. they, you should be questioning every last one of them. Yeah. So that's also, uh, you know, a, a conversation that needs to happen on a higher level, obviously, because who's stopping them, right? And who's allowing them? Who's giving them the gate pass to, to, to do all of this? Uh, but that being said, uh, what is this about um, 30 lucky subscribers to experience Kenya for the first time that you're on about? What's, what's, what's that? About, oh, okay. So we partnered, yeah. you know, with a, uh, another company called Worldview. Uh huh. And we brought 30 subscribers uh, from our channel to Kenya. No way. Yes, yes. And Fully they, they, paid everything. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. They paid everything and they are enjoying Nairobi. They're seeing the sites. I've been hearing some of them because of the miseducation in America. Because you have to understand, in America, they don't even like to say Kenya or, or Rwanda, they say Africa. Right. That's so disrespectful. Like mm -hmm. this is many countries, but you just Africa. That, that's, that's wrong. So yeah. we got to go from that miseducation yeah. to have I heard people saying, I didn't realize they had skyscrapers here. What? I'm like, but, but that's the miseducation, yeah. unfortunately, that white supremacy give black people and also white people too about the African continent. Thank God for Obama, because at least now, you know, no, they know Kenya. No, no. <laughs> Please don't bring up Obama because Obama was the biggest disappointment really? to black America and no also way. Kenya as well. No yes. way. Yes. He did not do nothing for black people. Mm. Not a thing. Mm -hmm. a, we believed in Obama. Mm -hmm. I voted for Obama. Yeah. But Obama didn't do a thing for black people. He did something for immigrants, mm -hmm. um, which most of is south of the border of Latin America. Mm -hmm. He did something for LGBT. Yeah. He did something for the white bankers. Mm -hmm. But he did nothing for black America. So, no, he's, we, we don't respect him in black America. Sorry. Really? No, we don't. That is so interesting to hear. Like, we would have never thought that. Well, it's, it's, it's something, because he done nothing. We expected Obama to be the first black president, right? We was happy to see him, his beautiful family. We expected him to go in and do something for black America. I understand you're the president of everybody. I get it. Mm -hmm. But we expected something from him. Mm -hmm. He did nothing but just kind of push us to the side. Well, I can't only do something for black people. Oh, I'm the president of everybody, but yet he's doing something for everybody else but black people because mm -hmm. that's a, he's part of the Democrat party. Mm -hmm. and the Democrat party has a mantra of a benign neglect. In other words, we will not do nothing for black people. We won't promise them anything, mm -hmm. but we just want their votes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're not, no, we're sorry. We're not going to take that no more. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Obama, you know, failed us in that area. What kind of support are you getting um, corporate-wise, if you will, even, um, I don't know, even through your subscription, so to speak? Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, who's behind the scenes actually supporting your channel uh, and, and how we can also now continue to plug in, other than obviously submitting our positive stories, so right. to speak. Yeah. Well, the people is the supporters. Mm. Corporations don't support me. Okay. Um, small businesses in America has ran advertising with yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, that's black owned businesses. Okay. But major corporations will not, not from that team won't partner with someone like me because I'm speaking against racism and white supremacy and my message is too black. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that mm -hmm. because all I care about is reaching black people throughout the world. I don't need them. We got billions of black people. They can support me. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like where I'm at. Now, if a corporation want to come in and support, mm -hmm. hey, I'm, I'm welcome to it. But you're not going to tell me, well, we'll support you, but can you not say this? No. The yeah. program is the program. Either you support us or you don't. So I, I'm more so about the people, right. the grassroots. Okay. That, that's who supports us. Okay. All right. Tell Kenyans who are watching you uh, to subscribe. <laughs> sure. You All know, right. you could definitely watch African Diaspora News Channel on YouTube. Make mm -hmm. sure you subscribe. Mm -hmm. We are a daily show. Uh, you can also check us out website, mm -hmm. Um You also can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, you know, all of the different platforms. So, yeah, just, just check us out. You know, we 
definitely going to talk about the issues you're concerned about. Okay. Phil Scott, thank you so much for making time to be with us this morning. Unfortunately, we have to end it there because uh, we are going to be crossing over to our analysis about the World Cup. Uh, who are you supporting very quickly if you actually, actually like soccer? <laughs> we call well, it football, you guys call it soccer. Technically, I'm more so about, you know, American football, NFL, <laughs> but I say about default, I was told I need to support Cameroon. So. Oh, 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 you don't have a choice. It's I, I don't have a choice. I can do a default, you know. <laughs> okay, let's see how far Cameroon will go, but good choice, good choice right there. All right, so you had it for yourself. Uh, go to Africa Diaspora News Channel on YouTube. Subscribe, of course, if you do want the uh, very latest and even just positive stories because that's really what we're talking about. Who's telling the African story better than we can, okay? So we've got the challenge right here from Phil Scott this morning. Uh, continue to obviously engage us through our social media platforms. Let's leave it there. We'll see you tomorrow bright and early from 6 a.m. on K24. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.